So the Chiefs are not messing around in free agency as they not only brought in a serious weapon in Marquise Brown for the offense, but have brought back some very key pieces on the defense. And the scariest part of it all is they aren't even close to being done. So in this video, I'll explain why that should terrify the rest of the league as we look at several moves made over the past couple of days, an old friend signing with the Dolphins, the most recent Legereus Sneed potential trade update, and more. But first, how about those? First up, former Chiefs tight end Jody Fortson is officially moving on to another team. The writing was at least appearing to be on the wall for him when the Chiefs opted to not tender a contract offer to Fortson, who was a restricted free agent. This made him an unrestricted free agent and he could sign with any other team, though reports were saying the Chiefs still wanted Jody back just on a cheaper deal and not the cost it would have been if they tendered him. Well, shortly after that, they then signed tight end Irv Smith Jr. to a one-year deal worth around $1.3 million. Not only is that the same price as Blake Bell last year, but Irv Smith Jr. is only 25 years old compared to Blake Bell being 32. Irv is also a better receiving tight end than Bell and could also compete with Noah Gray in some capacity. At the very worst, he's gonna upgrade the floor of the tight end room, so it was a great signing, but that had many wondering if Jody would be back or not after this move was made, and he made his decision. He's moving on to the Miami Dolphins. His agents, the Katz brothers, yes, the same agents as Chris Jones, gag, announced online that he signed with the Dolphins, and honestly, this is a fun fit for Jody. Miami is a very dynamic offense, and as long as this guy can stay healthy, I think he has a shot of making their roster and contributing in some capacity. That has been the unfortunate knock on Fortson thus far though, his inability to stay healthy and was probably a contributing factor that led to the Chiefs going in a different direction or not wanting to pay the tender amount, you know what I mean. And while Fortson is gone, the Chiefs decided to bring back a couple of defensive tackles yesterday. The first was Tershawn Wharton, who is now back for his fifth year with KC after Jordan Schultz announced he's re-signing with the Chiefs on a one-year deal worth 2.75 million all Guaranteed, I was pulling for Turk to return, uh, but was a bit surprised by the number of his one-year deal. Good for him though, as Wharton had a bounce back year last season after tearing his ACL in 2022, racking up 21 tackles, two sacks, and a fumble recovery while playing in every game this season. He also had seven tackles and a sack in the Chiefs postseason run. He's a fine piece to add back into the defensive tackle room. Knows the system, has been here, will contribute, etc., etc. And shortly after this was announced, another familiar face was announced to return to the same room. Defensive tackle Derek Nadi also on a one-year deal. So the longest tenured Brett Beach draft pick, 2018 uh, third rounder, I believe, is back again for his seventh season with the team. So that makes the third consecutive season in a row after his rookie deal expired that he signed a one-year deal to return back to the Chiefs. And we all know the three-time Super Bowl champion wants a taste of his fourth ring as KC chases the ever-elusive three-peat. Some, though, are not too happy about about the naughty signing saying he's got a very bad PFF grade, but some of those same people also say PFF is trash and unreliable when it fits their narrative, so meh. Naughty's not the greatest DT in the world by any means, but he had his moments in the postseason run, and at worst, Naughty is a veteran who knows the system well and can provide competitive depth at training camp to help bring out the competition and some of the other guys in this room. And I'm gonna be curious to see how this room ends up shaking out because they've now locked in several recently. Chris Jones was the very big and very expensive splash, but they also signed Mike Pinnell, Turk Wharton, Derek Naughty, Isaiah Bugs, and then there's Neil Farrell, who they traded for from the Raiders before the start of last season. It's gonna be interesting to see who steps up in that room and earns starting roles, getting the most playing time, all that good stuff. And with that, I think that makes the defensive tackle room look decently equipped for a run at a three-peat, though of course they could still add a couple more via free agency as well as the draft. Now, Casey wasn't done making moves yesterday as last night, they also signed former Cardinals receiver Marquise Hollywood Brown to a one-year deal. It's a seven-year base, I believe, but it's worth up to $11 million. And that's a surprisingly team-friendly deal pulled off by Veach and company. I covered this signing way more in depth in a video last night. You can check it here. Also went live to celebrate, but this signing was a great one for the wide receiver room, in my opinion. This brings in a receiver with lightning speed, a true deep threat for the first time since Tyreek Hill's departure. For example, Marquise Brown has reached 20 plus miles per hour on 33 routes since 2020, second only to Tyreek 
Hill. They are comparable to size as well. Though to be clear, I'm not directly comparing Tyreek Hill to Marquise Brown. There will never be another Tyreek. That man is a freak. But Marquise Brown is a much more legitimate deep threat than MVS because not only can he run fast as hell, but he doesn't need all the time to get that momentum to reach that speed. He's got a very quick burst off the line and will be a nightmare for defenses to prepare for as they consider dealing with him, but also Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey. Brown is sure happy to be here as he shared his epic text exchange with Andy Reid last night after the signing was made public. Of course, Big Red wanted him to think red, Casey Red with diamonds, hinting at yet another Super Bowl ring, and Marquise hilariously responded that Big Red needs to think Hollywood Brown lights camera action, which is such a fantastic reply. Another pretty solid reply by Brown was made after Kyler Murray continued this offseason trend of quoting Tiki Barber, who had this to say once Saquon Barkley signed with the Eagles. You're dead to us, Saquon. Good luck. You're dead to me. So the new trend at the moment is if a former teammate signs elsewhere, just tell them they are dead to you. Well, that's what Kyler Murray said to Hollywood after the announcement was made that he's signing with KC. And Hollywood's response was a few laughing emojis followed up by, I'm a miss you, little man, which is absolutely perfect considering Kyler Murray is roughly five foot three. What's up, little man? What's up? Little man. This signing should honestly terrify the NFL when you consider what he does to the offense, the value he brings, combined with the fact that the Chiefs have brought back linebacker Drew Tranquil and defensive tackle Chris Jones, two very key pieces of the defense. But this is scary because the Chiefs aren't done yet. There's still work to be done, multiple positions, and if a luxurious need trade does indeed end up happening soon, more on that in a bit. Casey is going to have another 20 million in cap space to sure up some of these other holes. And once they load up in these other areas, it's about to be a wrap for the 2024 season, or at least Casey should be favorites to win it all once again. Now, some of the areas Casey is still going to be looking to beef up involves the wide receiver room, believe it or not. Sure. Casey released MVS and signed Hollywood Brown, but McCole Hardman and Richie James are still free agents. And that's why I think Casey will add at least another vet, even if it's a cheap vet minimum type of guy, as well as draft another wide receiver early, maybe round one, maybe round two, we'll have to see. Then when you look at the left tackle situation, that still needs addressed. This could be answered in the draft, or maybe Casey opts to sign someone like Tyron Smith. Either way, I think Wanye Morris will be in the mix for the starting job, but he's gonna have to earn it. Next is the running back room that needs attention because both Jarek McKinnon and Clyde edwards Lair are free agents. They do have both Daneric Prince and LaMichael P. Ryan on the roster, but I'm not sure Casey will stop there thinking that is enough. They could sign a veteran like Alexander Madison, Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, or even bring back CEH. He's fine for a depth piece, especially on a cheap deal, even though I know that will upset some to even hear me say that. There's also the draft. Maybe a day three back there, high on, similar to Pacheco, a couple of years ago. We'll have to wait and see, but the room, running back room, definitely needs addressed as well. There's certainly other positions they are gonna be paying attention to, like a backup QB with Blaine Gabbert, for example, being a free agent. There's some options out there that's gonna get addressed, but those are some of the most pressing position groups. And again, one way they can solve these issues or a easier path to solving these issues is by trading Legereus Sneed because it's going to free up around 20 million in cap space. Well, yesterday, Nate Taylor of The Athletic said that a Sneed trade is 50-50, though Sneed is still campaigning to stay with the Chiefs. And each day that passes, there is a chance that Sneed maybe just maybe returns to the Chiefs. However, he's in an odd situation because in the next couple of years, KC will also most likely be looking at extending Trent McDuffie and keeping him around for years to come. So I doubt the Chiefs want to have both Legereus Sneed and Trent McDuffie on the roster making good money for cornerbacks. And that's why one option is to have Sneed just play on the tag this year, let him walk in free agency the next, but it is the less likely option given the needs of the roster and other position groups that I've already mentioned. They could also extend him, which would lower this year's cap hit, but McDuffie complicates that as well, and you would need it out after a couple of years. That's why all eyes are still on a Sneed trade. There was urgency from KC earlier on in free agency with many saying, hey, they're not gonna get a wide receiver until Sneed is gone, but they made it happen with Marquise Brown, so let's freaking go. And I'm assuming the holdup here is that the Chiefs didn't get offers they expected as far as draft capital is concerned at first, and are now figuring out if they settle for lesser for Sneed or keep him around knowing he's worth more to them than maybe a 
third or a fourth rounder in this year's draft. The report was they wanted a second, could maybe even get a first, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Another possible issue is that a team is willing to give up the draft capital the Chiefs want for Snead. You know, maybe it wasn't the capital they wanted at first, but the capital they will probably settle on. But Snead is having issues on his end with negotiating a long-term deal with them. Well, the Colts have reportedly been pretty interested in Snead and Steven Holder, a Colts reporter for ESPN, actually said, quote, my understanding is the holdup is less about Casey's willingness to trade Snead and more about the challenge of agreeing to a new contract. Okay, so that's how it looks like things are trending right now. He then said, the Chiefs are being reasonable, but can anyone come to terms with Snead on a contract? That is the biggest question. The Colts have executed over 200 million in contracts this week already, so it's not an easy hurdle for them at the moment. Then, Pretty Ricky 213, the infamous free agency newsbreaker who called Marquise to the Chiefs, Calvin Ridley getting that massive 90 plus million dollar deal. Among other news, he's been right on. He's been right like 90% of the time, has a legitimate source of some sort. It is pretty insane, <laughs> all things considered, but he said it sounds like a deal with the Colts was done, though the contract with Sneed was the holdup. However, gun to Ricky's head, he thinks Sneed is indeed getting traded and does not remain a chief for the 2024 season. So right now, it's still looking like Sneed is gone, but time, probably sooner rather than later, will surely tell. There's also the much lower possibility they could literally resend the tag because uh, Sneed hasn't signed it yet. So they could rescind the tag and Sneed could just walk into free agency. I just really don't think that is a very likely scenario for the Chiefs at the moment. But with all that being said, let me know your thoughts, how you think free agency is going so far for the Chiefs and the Sneed situation. Do you think he does end up getting traded or will he stay in KC for a run at another Super Bowl ring, i.e. the three-peat? Let me know either way in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.